Especially in the, um, the last part where we went on that run where Trent got on the heater, um, um, Jake hit two shots. I think we were just poised. Um, you know, we, we didn't let the crowd bother us. Um, they went up, they had their run, and we just um, threw our punches back. What was different for you guys in the second half just to maybe get through yeah, kind of a, a rough first half for both teams? Our defense, our defense um, it was tremendous. Um, we held them 21 points in the second half. Um, that's, that's great because we, um, we feed off our defense. And then once our defense is going and we get that going good, and, that starts our offense, you know, we get, we get fast break points, we get that juice, you know, to go back and next get our offense. So that's definitely why we, we turned it. What's key for you to get that? I don't think it was easy. I, I feel like I, I missed a double shot, you know, I missed shots that I, that I could have made. Um, you know, they, they forced me to take tough shots and they, they forced like, like hard, hard positions in the post. It was just about, like, you know, coming out of second half, keeping, keeping my mind um, right. Um, just slowing down on my moves and trying to finish things from the bottom game. Coach, you talk about getting Trace in foul trouble right off the bat, and he went to the bench, and then you got Durr in foul trouble too. Just talk about how that happened uh, played in the game. That was a big time for us. I feel like um, Trace, if you know him, he's a really impact, impactful player. Um, you know, and when you have a guy like that on the bench, it allows you to like you know, to, um, slow down, take a deep breath, you know, um, execute a better offense. You know, you have to worry. It's one that's offensive that you have to worry about. So it was definitely, it definitely worked out. In our, uh, I wouldn't say in our favor, but. It definitely, you know, gave us that the opportunity to like cool down and you know just go about playing our game. You seem to be helping shooters get shots. The process do you hold and not the responsibility? It's the stuff, man. You know, um, so about setting the screens, um, rolling out of them, um, drawing guys to, um, I'm forcing guys to um, check me, you know, the rolls, I'm getting deep positions where guys have to double down fast. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that play into that. Um, coach um, runs great offense, um, you know, you know to get to get those guys open and get those guys shots. Um, he knows the style, he knows what they do, and he tries to execute this and that. Well, you guys have really gotten beat on the road in the big time the last two years. What has led to that, and what's it like for you guys as a group when you walk into a ring like this? Our toughness, man. Um, you know, Coach, Coach, he instilled his toughness into us, and um, we've, game by game, just grew, grew in that area where we just like, have that toughest mindset. We don't care if we're on the road or not. For us, it's a home game, you know. We don't let the noise, we don't let anything bother us. We're, we're poised, and we, we go out and we execute every game. Kofi, what brought you back to Illinois this year to play with these guys? A lot of factors, man. Um, the players, obviously, um, great dudes. Um, built great bonds with those guys, coaches. Um, they've been tremendous with my growth, you know, getting better as a player and a person. Um, and Champagne, man. If you know Champagne, you know how great it is, how great those fans are, um, the sacrifices they make for us. Um, you know, they're always there. So I think those three factors are definitely some of the main reasons I came back. And the last one would be my legacy, um, to fulfill my legacy. And, you know, ultimately be one of the best players to leave the league of Illinois. What will keep you here next year? What will keep me, what will keep me here? <laughs> uh, you know, who knows what the future holds, man. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to think I'm a humble person. Um, you know, I'm not in a rush to do anything. You know, I'm just trying to develop my game, trying to get better, trying to win. Brad, we'll talk about poise in the first half especially. Kind of tough to get going. How do you guys build that for you? Is it experience? Is it trust? Like, yeah, it's, that all come together? it's all of those things, man. It's experience, um, it's trust, it's um, it's a bond that we have, you know. When you can look to the side and, but it, like Trent, for instance, he had an air ball today. When you can look to the side and nobody's hanging their head, everybody's saying, you shoot the next one, you know, stuff like that. It builds, gives you that confidence, you know, that no matter what happened, I don't care what happened, my brother's got my back and I got their back, you know. It's just that brotherhood and that, that, that connection that we have where. No, no, nobody matters but us, you know. It's, it's all about us and, uh, and winning. Trent hits those two big threes in the second half. One is a timeout, one with Joe Ten. What did those do for you guys? What did he do for us? Yeah, no, one of those two shots he threw in the second half. Um, yeah, it was, it, it, was, it was good for us. You know, um, teams like Indiana, um, they don't go away easily, you know. And when you got guys that when you got guys that can hit those shots and separate us um, you know, and build them the leads, um, it's big time, you know, because you never know. This is big time play. Um, six point leads and five point leads don't win basketball. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Well, you held them to 21 points in the second half. What's that mean to you and as this, for this team to hold the team on their own court to 21 in the second half? It means, it means a lot to us, man. A lot of teams focus on offense. Um, our main focus is defense, you know, and we take such pride in that. Whenever we have a good um, defensive game, we celebrate those, you know. We, we pat, pat each other on the backs. I mean, you know, we go back and then we try to get better, you know. Um, we take great pride in defense, and to hold a team like that to 21 points, a really good offensive team like that, um, it's tremendous. It just shows, um, goes to show you our work. Those tunnels like when you're trying to break a run on the other side. Coach talked about 
Monte or Trent or you stepping up and saying something. What, what's it like in those huddles to be able to have the boys? It's, it's really big time, man. You know, you got guys that listen, man. I mean, especially the freshmen, I'm Luke. Um, RJ and all those guys, they, really, they listen and they, they take heed to whatever veterans are saying, you know. When you got guys that listen and, and you don't got guys that shrug, shrug their shoulders and hold their heads down and always got something to say back to you, it makes your job easier as, as leaders, you know. Um, so it's just about controlling it, controlling it, making sure that nobody's losing their mind. You know, challenges come and it's about overcoming those challenges. So for new rematch next, what excites you about getting a chance to go up against those big men again? You know, um, those two big men are two of the best bigs in, um, in, in college basketball. Actually, you know, it's always a great opportunity to go out there, you know, match up against those guys with size, um, like Edia has and the skill that Tra um, um, Travion has. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting that rematch because they beat us at home, you know. So, it's always a, it's always a huge crowd um, at Purdue, and that's it's, it's going to challenge us, you know, and see what kind of team we are. You know, we came here, we did it here in Indiana, and we're going to try and do it at Purdue. Do you learn anything about your team today, Kofi? And if so, what? Um, the thing I learned today, I, I, I learned how, t how locked in those guys are. Um, you know, I looked at, I was on the bench for a second. And I looked um, to, to the right of me and I saw Pods, Pods, um He's shouting out their plays. You know, he's jumping. He's telling everybody, "Yo, this play's coming. This play's coming. This is what they're doing." I mean, you know, it's just connectivity. You know, knowing what guys are doing and trying to help your team win. Um, you know, so I, I think that's definitely something I saw today. Um, when he's on the floor, um, we're just shooting. It's, it, it helps me a lot. You know, um, guys. Have to be um, cognizant of like helping off him because they know he's capable of shooting, shooting the ball well, especially when I'm passing the ball out the post the way I do. You know, so he definitely helps me. I mean, he helps get he gets open a lot. You know, that's he's the best player in the country with cutting and you know, getting the open spots and just having space. And so he definitely like up to my game. Yeah, man, it was, it was big time, man. It was, you know, you look up in those stands and you see all those red and white. Um, you know, you hear them chanting, they're screaming at you and stuff. Um, you know, th th those things get me going personally, you know, um, and definitely gets my team going because they were really pumped up um, in the beginning of the game. Um, you know, these atmosphere, atmosp atmospheres are why we come to the Big Ten, you know, to play an at atmosphere like that. You go anywhere in the Big Ten and you see atmospheres like this, like Wisconsin, Michigan State, you know, Illinois, the list goes on and on. So it's definitely a, re a really good thing. How satisfying is it when you come into a place like this and it's loud and it's hostile, and at the end, there's nothing to do it's really satisfying, man. It, it goes to show you the work you put in, you know. Um, like, not letting things bother you, that's one of the biggest things, man. It's one of the hardest things to do, actually, you know, when somebody is screaming at you, telling you how much you suck, you know. Um, it's really one of the toughest things to keep a level head and execute and do what you have to do, what you have to do to win, you know. So, playing in that crowd and overcoming and winning, um, it's, it's tremendous. Pat, you know, the, the feeling you got when they booed you louder than anybody else in the warm-ups, did that, you enjoy that? Yeah, I definitely enjoy that, man. It just goes to show, like, like, I'm, I'm doing something good, you know. If they're not booing you, you're not doing something right. Um, you know, they know what kind of player I am. They know what I've been to the table, and they try to get me out of my game. And I'm not going to allow that, so you know, I, I just keep my, my, my poise and, and play my game. Just by telling each other, like, you know, keep your head up, um, take the next shot. Um, we work on those shots, you know. We, I see Luke put up a thousand of those shots. Trent put up a thousand of those shots, you know. So it's about, you know, you know you can make it. You're capable of making it. You wouldn't take it if you didn't know you could make it, you know what I'm saying? This is about telling them, keep, keep, keep your confidence, um, picking their head up, 